You are now tuned into the Property Management Show with your host, Alex Osinenko. We bring in the experts of today so you can be the master of tomorrow in all things property management. Whether it's getting more doors, running a profitable fee-based business, or by simply being the best property manager. Grab a pen and paper because this episode is sure to be a good one. Thank you and enjoy the show. Welcome to episode number 36. Man, we're getting old uh, of the Property Management Show. Quite exciting day today. Number one, um, I'm going to stand up for the whole show. Let's see how that goes. Um, number two, I have an awesome guest, Warren Tate. He is communication and presentation coach. Both of them are pretty important subjects for myself and any business owner out there. He, uh, but what's even more interesting is he worked as an estate manager, which we're going to talk to him about, in Australia's biggest property management company. Uh, he's also an author of a book called I Get You, How Communication Can Change Your Destination. And Warren, it's a pleasure having you on. Before we go and, 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 and give a little bit deeper introduction so people know who you are, what do you want our audience to learn today? I think it's quite simple that we're used to viewing the world through our own eyes and communicating our way. Uh, The best way to have effective communication is to understand how other people communicate, how they think, what their view of the world looks like, how they make decisions, and understand their view of the world first and then communicate on their level. That's the most important and you'll you'll build really quick relationships. So you're talking about uh, in a lot of your work and, uh, and presentations, you talk about changing destination. Yeah, right? absolutely. I'm trying to sort of understand that concept. Is it? Is it? Am I, am I elevating my sort of end goals, or what, what do you mean by changing destination? Well, I think today, more than any any other time in the history of well, we're in 2017. Technology is huge. We have emails, we have Facebook, we have Skype, like we're communicating with now, and mm. all of this technology. Uh, Yet we have lost the art of face-to-face communication and uh, interpersonal communication. And that can be over the phone as well uh, because we hide behind digital technology more so today. So we need to understand um, that communication is more important today to build relationships than it has ever been. And if you can master it, um, your destination is only uh, limited by your imagination. Ah, I see. Okay, I get it. I get it. Very interesting. So let's dig right into it. But first, Warren, t- tell people about yourself. What What are you famous for? How, how you know? How'd you go, become? You, you'll get to be a, a coach and, and and an author and a property manager in the past. Give us a story. Yeah, well, look, I've been in the industry for uh, in the real estate industry here in Melbourne, Australia, for over twenty years. Uh, I started off at the coalface in sales um, back in early the early nineties. So uh, please don't judge me how old I am. <laughs> Uh, but I um, and I loved it. I loved the industry. Um, I went out and did some corporate work outside of real estate for a little while, but then was drawn back into the franchise side of things through as a franchise manager. Uh, then I went to a, a company in, who wanted to be franchised. There were only about five or six offices. Uh, I franchised them, doubled their size of the network, and I was doing a lot of training, a lot of interaction, a lot of coaching with these franchise owners, property managers, salespeople. And that's where my passion came from. I just loved helping people. And if you can help people, um, you grow exponentially yourself, I believe. So um, so I started down this coaching path, sold out of the business, and now I'm a coach and trainer within the real estate industry and other industries as well, other corporate industries, uh, focusing on that presentation skills, communication skills. Uh, and with all the sessions and all my research, I, I don't like to deliver anything that's not proven in science. So I'm, I'm very fact so I do a lot of research, a lot of um, a lot of research into biology, psychology, some some key elements that are associated with that, like Daniel Pink, I love, um, Dr. Dalton Keogh from the University of uh, Toronto in Canada, I love his work. So understanding how people communicate more effectively, and then um, delivering that into the real estate world, which is what I love. So uh, along the way, of um, yeah, state manager for Run Property, which is now Little Residential, uh, run a business that. You know, overall, the business has 22,000 properties under management. Wow. Uh, the office I looked after had 3,000 properties under management. 
Uh, so got a really good grounding and understanding on the on the challenges that are faced in the uh, certainly in the property management world. All right, that that sounds like a very impressive sort of um, uh, um, uh, you know resume of qualifications. And you know I, I feel like people like you bring really a new dimension into the industry because you're industry trained yet you're master sort of at your own trade, which is you know communication and presentation. So let's start unpacking some of these things. Um, I want to. You know, I want to start with, I, I think that that's something that fascinates me, you know, on a psychology end of things and how we connect it to business. And you basically had this four, uh, four different personality types, uh, traits that, that actually can help um, you know, with communication. Is that like the first thing you would talk about or where would you start on this? It is actually the, it's the, the foundation for everything that we do because we, we, are, we are born and we are brought up in an environment which absolutely guides us into how we communicate both now and in the future. So our environment, um, our demographics, our geographic location will determine a, a, a number of things on how we see the world. So understanding your personality type I think is important, but more importantly understanding the other person who you're communicating with, understanding their personality type. So if, if you don't understand their personality type and you're communicating from the complete opposite, opposite spectrum, um, there's going to be a clash. There's going to be a miscommunication. Oh, and it's it going all the time. It's, yeah, it's... yeah, it just ends in frustration. Um, so, you, so you need to understand your personality style ideally first, uh, and then you'll get a clearer picture on the four key personality styles. Now, this, Alex, I don't want to go into detail, but there's, there's so many different personality style tests, and if you did them all, which I've done most of them, um, you'll think you're psychotic, but <laughs> you, you, there, there's strength tests, there's personality styles, there's the Gallup strength test, there, there's um, Myers-Briggs, there's DISC, there's so many, right. but it's about just having a really basic understanding first, and, and then it becomes really effective when you're talking to people. Well, do you want to go through your methodology? Because I like yours. Yours has three, four levels, right? That's easy. Yeah. Well, um, well it's pretty simple. Um, the controller, as I call them, I think it's very, really easy to understand that the controller is, is your high, high D under the DISC personality profile. So they're, they're sharp. They want results. They're, they're quick talking. They're generally your CEO and managers and so forth, and they just want results. They want outcomes. But give me the facts, then I'll make a decision, on, and I'll move on. They, they often talk quickly. Uh, and they make decisions quickly as well, uh, and they they have a very high bullshit meter. <laughs> so they'll they'll pick up on you if you if you're telling um, if you're not telling the truth, and if you're not getting to the point quick enough. So um, these are people where you receive an email, and, and you write a detailed email about something regarding maintenance, for instance, and they might say, "Yep, go ahead." And you think, "Wow, that that person's having a really tough day, or they don't like me, or there's something wrong here." No, no, no. They're, they've just made the decision, and they're moving on to the next. Don't take offense to it. That's me, baby, uh, man. I, I, you just described me. That's kind of that's 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 a little scary, man. <laughs> so, uh, all right, I, I, that's interesting. So, how do you communicate with these people if there is a a conflict of sorts, or if you have to explain uh, a particular situation? Let's say in the property manager's realm. Let's say um, you know you ended up placing a tenant one of their properties, and the tenant. You know, didn't pay rent for the last two weeks. You didn't catch it. Whatever the case is, how would you deal with that personality? Yep. Obviously, the the information and the communication, and something which I love to talk about, and possibly a little bit further, is that we we must pick up the phone and chat to them, because you hear tonality and you hear hear the tone of their voice. You understand where they're coming from. But it, again, provide the facts. Look, unfortunately, we've put this tenant in. We've tried to communicate and contact with them several times. They're putting a payment plan in place. This is when the start, when it starts. This is how I'm going to follow it up. Are you comfortable with this? All right. So give them the solution and, and be short and sharp. Don't go into some long-winded story about oh well, you know that their dog's sick and they've just had uh, twin children and and look, there's a real concern about whether they're going to be ongoing payments on time. And no, no, no. That, they don't want to hear the sob story. They just want to hear the facts around it and what your solution is and whether they agree with it or not. Hmm. And how do you tell a person as a controller? Uh, they're short. They're sharp. They, they won't waffle. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you how it is. Um, quite often, then you'll think they're being rude or blunt. No, they're not. They're just busy, and that's how they communicate. Uh -huh. um, gotcha. I did a presentation yeah, back in the sales side just quickly. I did a listing presentation in 10 minutes with a person who was a high D, listed the property in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's... Uh, that, that's quite so who is the 
that is unbelievable. Yeah, who who is the the next person on a, on, next, on a profile? The next one, which is um, we're on the introverted scale now, so we've got the we've got the control, and now we've got the colourful. Now the colourfuls love to talk, and then they I call them colourfuls or peacocks or. And, and they just love to talk about themselves and they just love to talk and they'll be always talking. They'll talk about their weekend. They'll talk about their friends. They'll talk about what they did with their friends on the weekend. They'll talk about what happened, what movie they went to see. They'll tell you all the bits and pieces about that movie. And then they'll just keep talking until um, they've run out of things to say. But then they'll just keep talking about themselves again and uh, they'll talk about how wonderful they look and, and all these sorts. And it's very obvious. They love to name drop. Um, they're good fun people. They're organizing all the social events. These are the people that you want to be around if you want to know where a party is <laughs> or where the best bar to go to is. So they're fun people, but they just love to talk. And they describe a lot of things in a lot of detail, but flowery language, um, And but they love everything about themselves. So the best way to communicate with these people is to let them speak. Too often we try to cut them short. Um, and secondly, compliment them especially if it's a face-to-face -face meeting, if they've made an effort into how they look or made an effort into how they've presented their property, make sure you compliment them around that because they will love you forever. Mm. So you go on Peacock? Yeah, a colorful or Peacock. But, you know, show, show me my feathers, look at me, look at me, it's I all like about that. me. I like that. Right. Uh, and the controller, do you call them eagles? Yeah, they're the eagles. I, I yeah, like they're, your they're, terminology. I want to use yours. Um, yeah, let's let's use mine. The colourful. It's really easy, and generally they do wear colourful, <laughs> colourful clothing, and and to stand out because they want to stand out. So, is there a way to um, let, before we go and and talk about how to deal with it, with a potential problem with these people, with these kinds of people? Um, how do you determine uh, somebody's a peacock or no, that personality again, type? Well, they, they will talk a lot. And they will talk about that. They will give you a long winded answer. Some of the best ways I've to, to understand personality styles, I always ask a simple question. Can you describe your home to me, please? And what's the what's and what do you love the most about it? Can um, you describe guys, if you're listening, that's that's the one to write down. Can you describe your home to me? And, and what was the second part? And, and what do you love the most about it? What do you love the most about it? Hey, can you describe yeah. your home to me and tell me what you love the most about it? Oh, that's gold. Okay. Let's move yeah, on. So, so for instance, a, a controller will say, oh, look, it's a, it's a four-bedroom townhouse, three levels, double, double lock-up garage. Um, yeah, it's got some city views and a balcony. A colorful will say, oh, it's just beautiful. I love living here. I love the feeling of it. Um, we love sitting out on the balcony and we watch the city lights come on. Um, it's over three levels and we've got four massive bedrooms with my, my children love to run around and play in because they're, they're so big. Uh, and the kitchen, oh, I just love entertaining in the kitchen and I cook up a storm and we have guests around. It really is a beautiful home. So, you know, quite, quite a difference uh, mm. in those two descriptions, but, but it's so obvious once you, once you pick it up. So I advocate, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, I'm sort of, Professionally, I consider myself a salesperson first, because um, um, that's I have a, I have a passion for 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 you know relationships and 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 moving things, um, and 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 so discovery has always been my biggest sort of uh, what I advocate for is is a lot of times that salespersons' job isn't done well because they just they forego that part they they're in a rush to presentation to to pitching. Um, the discovery mode is so so significant, and what you but what basically Warren you were saying is, you know, there's there's even more depth to discovery. If you understand who you're speaking with, you can adjust your style, and I would say you can significantly improve your uh, success rate. Wouldn't you say oh, that? By exponentially, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a couple of other tricks which hopefully we'll, we'll touch on, being the echo effect and and so forth as well. Uh, Mark, I have it written Mark. down. I have it written down. We're gonna we're gonna go there. We're gonna go there. So yeah, let's so, let, 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 let's 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 we got like you gotta keep me focused too because I, I sometimes go on a tangent. So uh, on the peacock side of things, let's say okay, they're talking about they're talking about all these fancy flowers and all these fancy beautiful view view and what have you in the house. Then you sign them up as a client, and again you place the tenant. Tenant's not paying rent. Let's say they destroyed the garden, um, whatever. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah. 
again, you need to you need to feel from their side of the view, their point of view, and you say, oh my God, look, your beautiful garden. Unfortunately, the tenants haven't looked after it to to anywhere near the extent we would expect to, and, and you would expect to. Um, I know we we love that garden and we love the flowers and, and the plants and everything that we've put into there and the time that you put in. Um, I've mentioned how important it is to you, to the tenants, and they're they're extremely apologetic. They're getting a gardener in because they realise that they're, they're not of the standard that you would like it to have, and, and then they're going to get a gardener in on a on a fortnightly basis. We've come to an arrangement regarding that, and uh, look, I'd, I'll keep checking up on it just so we don't you know we don't devalue your property in any way, and I'll keep you updated and show you pictures and everything else. So. Look, I hope that's okay with you from a solution point of view. Those photos will come through as soon as that garden has been out there. Man, that's smooth. I'm sold. <laughs> right. so, that was a long-winded answer. They love the long-winded answers. It's about what they love so much about that garden. But more importantly, they're very visual as well because they, you know, the automatic image they have in their head is, oh, my God, this is a complete disaster. Um, they suddenly think it looks like a desert when it's pro probably not that bad. It's overgrown and it's got some weeds. And um, now, you, now you're taking that extra step of love and care, which they love, and also sending them images, which they love as well. They love photos. They, they relate to images a lot more than other people. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's very good. So take the time to paint the picture for them or do it with video or virtual tour or whatever. So these are, these are the kind of people that would like that stuff. And so these yeah, two were just hit uh, were Endoza extroverts, right? That's correct. Correct. All right. So let's go into our first introvert uh, type well the compliance is quite easy and I, I call them almost like the wise old owl they love statistics so if you get them to describe their home they'll say it's approximately 16.4 squares or, or or 160 square meters in size uh, we bought it back in january yeah, it was the 20th of january 1988 um yes so 88 that was it uh, and it's um, look, we love it. We love our 4.2 square meter living area, um, and they start to just they they love in love talking about precise numbers and figures and actual facts. Mm -hmm. So they're really strict around. If you say roughly thereabouts, possibly maybes to them, they will discount you immediately because you're not accurate. Um, <laughs> the one the one comment I always like to make so is uh, if you're meeting somebody, let's say they're called John. And you've got a fair idea that they're they're a compliant. Just say, oh, John. By the way, how do you spell that? Is is that with the H or without the H? And automatically, they're just going to say, oh, I love you. You're amazing. Mm. So, so you call them compliant. Call them owl. Uh, owl. Yeah, the compliant owl. Or, or the owl in the bird, bird world. Now, if you're looking for, if you're having trouble getting a tenant into a property, um, or if you think the rent, um, you know, they're asking too much rent, and you need a rent reduction. You don't just say, look, we've had a few people through and unfortunately we're not getting any applications or whatever it may be. You need to say, look, our days on market on average is 12 days. Um, we're out to 14 days with your property now. Um, st you know, statistically, it tells us that we are overpriced in our marketplace. Now, there are 20 other properties in our marketplace priced at exactly $20 less per week than yours may I suggest that we match what they're offering out in the market. So provide them with facts and give them the actual numbers around it and they will relate to it. Mm. Really cool. So an owl or, or AKA compliant is a person with statistical mindset that likes precise numbers. Reminds me of my dad and every other engineer friend I have. Is that about right? <laughs> yeah, engineers, accountants, teachers, auditors. You know the type. They're, they're very particular. They often wear cardigans. Nothing against people that wear cardigans, but they often do. Yeah. Um, all right, Warren, let's take a pause for a second. I'm going to talk about my first sponsor real quick, and then we're going to get into um, how to convince uh, or how to um, deal with potentially angry owl, um, and then we'll go to a, a, a third, a fourth personality type. So my, my first sponsor today is the PM Grow Summit. Those of you guys who listen to this podcast – no, um, some of you probably have attended last year. Um, this is the only conference in the United States that is laser focused on growth strategies for property management companies. We're bringing world class speakers, thought leaders from around the country and, in fact, around the globe. But we have a lot of Australians speaking, uh, some folks from New Zealand, from Europe. 
uh, and the USA, of course, Canada. Uh, it's the best place to network with other successful property management entrepreneurs. So I'll give you quickly five reasons to attend, and then I'll give you a discount code, and then we'll get right back to Warren. Reason number one, education. We doubled our speaker budget from 35000 last year to 70000 this year. That's a significant number. We buy a lot of top talent with that sort of speaker budget. Uh, comfort, uh, reason number two, we majorly improved the venue. Right now we're in, in top tier San Diego luxury hotel with an exceptional rate that is half the price of what they charge on, you know, for, uh, for an everyday person who just wants to book. It's the hotel in San Diego Gaslight District. Uh, the depth of the information you get is, is going to be also uh, at the next level because we're taking 1% of our speakers. We're asking them to teach a full half-day workshop, uh, one on sales and one on video marketing. Um, number four reason, it's all-inclusive. You're going to be treated like royalty. You get there. We'll take care of all your food, your, your drinks, your beverages, your entertainment. All that is going to be provided to you as well as all the videos of the talks all of the slides for all the speakers so you can study up and follow up. So we've done an event last year where we included all of our content for 2017 attendees. And, you know, we have lots of people spending a lot of time re-watching some of these talks with their teams. So you bring that, uh, uh, all of that education to your team and you implement it. That helps you get a buy-in from your team and you can implement these new uh, uh, systems and new uh, methods you learn. And lastly, be surrounded by success. You know, you're going to meet the best, the top professionals in our industry. Um, these guys run multi, you know, uh, hundreds of properties, shops, and um, they're very motivated. They're very successful, and so are you, and you need to be there. So the event is January 31st through February 2nd in San Diego. Um, you can take $100 off. If you just go into uh, when you register at pmgrowsummit.com, type in the code Alex, A L E X, and you get $100 off. Um, you guys don't want to miss this. All right, Warren, we're back. So let's, let's, keep, um, let's keep the owl happy. How do we keep the owl happy? I mean, you said communicate with numbers. Are there any particular other tricks you would use to, to set the owl at ease? Just be extremely accurate. Uh, if you're uh, using if you're using percentages, um, put a decimal point in there, wow. <laughs> even if it doesn't ex even if it doesn't exist. So if it's seventeen percent, just call it seventeen point three percent. They just love the accuracy around what it is that you're saying, and that creates um, knowledge. They think, okay, you're just like me. You have the knowledge because because they, these guys are the only ones that read the um, terms and conditions on your Apple upgrades. <laughs> you know, we always just tick and, and, and yeah. go with the upgrade, download it, please. Yeah. These guys will read it. So okay. they will put everything on any agreement that you send them. They will read it. So know that agreement backwards. So your leasing agreements and everything else that you are sending to them, make sure you know those agreements backwards. Know the act, be able to quote the act and any issues that you may have around maintenance and so forth. Get some background knowledge on it. Even if you just need to Google it, if it's to do with some plumbing or electrical work, um, show them that you've done that research and you're knowledge about, knowledgeable about it rather than saying, yeah, look, I think possibly we could maybe um, look into this, but yeah, I I'm not sure if that's going to work for you or not, but look, just leave it with me. They're just going to lose all confidence in you. If you say, look, I I've done a little bit more research. I've obtained three quotes. Now, it looks like that lowest quote is they're missing out on a couple of key items which will rectify the situation and hold it in good stead for a number of years. I think we need to go with quote two. Um, I've checked their references and they are the best electrician that I can see in our marketplace today. Got it. Got it. Okay. So the owl, who's who? Let's, uh, are we ready to move to number four? Yeah, let's, uh, let's get to our comforter. Ah. The, the, the comforter. I always, uh, don't say anything to a comforter that you wouldn't say to your grandmother. So they're always, uh, they take a lot of time to, to build trust. They're often softly spoken. They, they'll be the last to speak in, in, a, in any situation because they're just listening, they're observing, they're taking all this information in. And they're trying to understand everybody's point of view and trying to be the peacemaker, trying to come up with a solution. Uh, and, and they want that trust before they're going to commit to anything. So if you're trying to get some form of agreement out of them, now 
So I'm going to have to lift my level again and get my energy back up because um, they are the exact opposite to you and me, Alex, the, the doves. You know, if we're eagles, they're doves. We have trouble <laughs> with them at times. Um, we need to listen to them intently and let them let them speak, but then we need to build trust with them. Until they trust you, they won't do anything with you. They won't agree to anything and they won't do business with you. And it takes time. But once you've got their trust, they're your client for life. They will love you forever until you break that trust. I understand. And then, then you're gone. And, they'll, and they won't come back, by the way, if you break their trust. So during the – right, right. So once you lose it, you lose it. What, during the discovery – Initially, what are some of the cues, Warren, that we need to look for to identify a comforter or you call them a dove? Yeah, the, the dove, which, um, as I say, they're peacemakers, so they generally speak a lot slower. They're very deliberate in their words and, and how they choose their words. They may pause and think a lot, and they will be very deliberate in what they say once they're willing to say something um, so to get them to speak openly it takes a while you need to be very clever with your questions you need to be very much open-ended questions and use words such as feelings um, so they're very they're very heartfelt so you need to make sure that you're understanding their view of the world from oh well this obviously means a lot to you um, look I really want to make sure that you're comfortable with this so words such as comfortable um, feeling, how, how, how can we make this situation better for you? So all of these softly spoken, peace of mind is another great one to use. And, you know, you know, it's best that we get you the right tin. That will give you peace of mind knowing that your asset is going to continue to grow rather than just getting any tenant in there. So it's important to understand those aspects and making sure that you're, you're seeing their view of the world again but being softly spoken with them and not trying to get a decision immediately. They won't do it. Mm. And so you, if you have, an, if you again hired them or they hired you as a property manager and you screwed up somewhere, not majorly, but somewhat, so I wouldn't call that betrayed a trust completely, but you've, you've, you've let them down a bit. How would you mitigate that with these people? Uh, be extremely apologetic. Um, understand, look, I, I know this has impacted on, on you, you know, substantially and, and it may seem, um, you know, I wish, I wish that I could have changed what I did, but look, this has happened. I'm doing all of, everything that I can do to make sure that it is rectified um, to your standard. And instead of sending an email, this is critical, instead of sending an email, write a written card, handwritten. So if you do a handwritten card to somebody um, who, is a, who is a comforter and dove, they will feel really honoured that you've taken that time and effort for them. So handwritten cards are extremely powerful with uh, with these type of people. Gotcha. All right, cool. So so my next question has to do with, okay, now we have all these four, four, four profiles fairly clearly laid out, and we can identify them during the discovery when they just, you know, inquire about the business or when you're just talking to them about their property um, before you even take them as a customer. But now I'm sure employees also, you know, your team members are also, you know, both of us. By the way, who are you? Which one are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm definitely a controller. I'm high on that spectrum. Uh, but I've also learned to adapt quickly because especially in a team environment, you, you can't afford to be just one personality all the time because you'll, you'll mismatch with, you know, 75% of who you're working with. Got you. So here's the thing. I, I like this. Let, let's think this through with me. If you are serving, you have to adapt to different personalities type, types. If you are being served, you should expect people to sort of understand you and, and sort of try to cater to you. Is that, I mean, is that, that's like an equilibrium sounds to me. Like I have to adapt here, but hey, if you try to sell me, you better understand me. I have to understand you, but when, you, when you're an employer-employee relation, you need to also understand their view of the world and say, okay, so somebody who's... Um, who's coming and they're having a difficult time, let's face facts, sometimes we have employees coming in, they've, they've got some issues uh, on a social level or, or at the home front. Um, if you're just a high uh, a controller and just, yeah, look, toughen up, princess, get over it, um, they're not going to take too well to that if they're, say, a colourful or, or worse still, if they're a comforter. So you need to adapt your personality style and say, look, I understand your situation, it's, it's 
pretty tough. We've also got a business to run here as well, and I'd love you to, to switch on as soon as you can. But look, if, you, if you're ready to talk, let's sit down and have a chat. I'd love to hear more and try and help you through this. Um, so that's understanding their view of the world and getting, to, getting them to open up a little bit more. Um, some of, the, um, some of the, the businesses that I've worked with, we've gone through and done personality styles, and we've actually um, put a little notification on their, um, on their desk or, or on their uh, workstation so that if somebody's approaching them, they know how to approach them. So that, that's something that, which can be fun in the workplace. Hmm. But you mentioned spectrum, so and that's what that was my next question. But I'm I'm already going to make an assumption because I think I know a little bit about this before. Is that not nobody is 100 percent you know absolutely a, a controller and nobody else, right? There's got to be a little bit of, of a mix, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's always a mix of two, and generally you can see on the uh, extrovert introvert scale. You know if they're um, if they're a fast talker like you and I are, and if you're open with your hand gestures and and you're quite passionate about what you do, you've got a fair idea that there's a D, uh, or there's um, a controller and colourful mix in there, and then how they talk, the length of their conversations, their short or sh or longish answers will tell you which side of that fence they're sitting on more so than the other. Uh, so I think it, it's, it's, it's my next question or my next topic that I'd like to open up with and maybe the echo effect. I don't know what that is, but I'm excited. It sounds good. I can come into the play here. How do you deploy this on an enterprise level, Warren? So we have, we have all this touchy-feely now psychologist stuff. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, um, our audience got, got a good idea of what these different personality types and have heard it before. So they connect to the disk profile. Okay, sounds good. How do you apply it, apply it enterprise-wise? How do you bring consistency? Like right now, I have 23 people running around. Like, you know, am I, am I tracking my customers by profiles in CRM? Is that what you recommend? Like, tell me, talk me through that. Oh, look, if you can put it into your CRM and, and if you put that down, that's, that's the ideal scenario. And, and you simply have, have a notification in there which tells you exactly what they are. That, that is the absolute high end of a, of a service level that, that I would recommend, absolutely. Um, that's Ritz Carlton, need... right? Are you familiar with Ritz Carlton? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, they know who you are. They like know you very well and your preferences. So that's it. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Yeah. But from that p perspective, how good does that make you feel when you go there? I've never been, but I've read a lot of books about it. <laughs> People say it's really good. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, it is a bit uh, expensive. But if, when you go there, I, I know certain hotels, it's called hospitality for a reason. If they make you feel fantastic and hospitable towards you and they're matching and mirroring you and they understand your view of the world, you just feel 100% because uh, the person who we love the most quite often is ourselves. Well, it's also little things. I mean, I, I like Nordstrom, right? I, I really, that's, that's, that's where I shop. I, you know, I don't buy a lot of clothes. You know, I, I wear, you know, promotional T-shirts, my company T-shirt. I don't really care. But when I do, I go to conference, I dress up. I want to look nice and prim. I go to Nordstrom, I have a guy who takes care of me, um, who knows me by name, who knows who I am. And if he's not there, somebody else uh, can help me. It's, it's just that, that, that sort of culture of service. And I read up on, on them. I admire the company. And they're consistently delivering, and I'll forgive them a few you know hiccups just because they've been consistent. Um, so I, I you, so what you're saying is that the ultimate level is truly capture your who your customers are, and, and have your whole company communicate to them at that level. Yeah, you know, when, when you're managing, let's say you're managing 150 different properties in a portfolio, um, you've got a lot of personality styles, not only with landlords but with tenants as well. So. To come from a point of view is I want to understand this person first in every conversation that you have. So whether that be meeting somebody in a networking environment, whether you're meeting somebody for the very first time in any environment, or whether you're communicating over the phone to a tenant or a landlord, make sure that you try and pick who they are and what their view of the world is, and the connection will be really quick. If we just go in and, and, and we're dealing with bushfires, we're putting out problems, and we're, just, we're on the go and we're flat out, and we don't give this any consideration, well, yeah, you're going to get a lot of disconnect. But it's a, it's a simple thought pattern that you have in your mind, and it, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. But as soon as you're attuned to it, you work through and say, okay, yep, this person's not rude. They're just a controller, and I need to change how I'm communicating. And it's, and it's a quick little split second. When, you know, Our brains are, are built for this, 
and you can pick it up quickly because our non-verbals, especially in face-to-face -face communication, our non-verbals are communicating so much more than we understand. In fact, 93% of our communication is non-verbal. Wow. Yeah. So we need to, so we need to understand that effectively and then start to pitch on or, or communicate on their level. Very interesting. Very interesting. So to apply it to the organization in terms of the team, um, what's the methodology there? How would people start applying these different personality types and actually improving their business with it? Yeah, the great Stephen Covey sums it up. The Dr. Stephen Covey un unfortunately passed away, but it's um, first understand, then be understood. It really is that simple because quite often we, we just want to blurt it out. We've got information or we need to get something across and we just do it from our perspective and not think about the other person. If you understand that other person first, it changes everything that you do. So where's that echo effect? Now, the easiest way to prove the echo effect is, have you ever spoken to somebody from another country, except for Australia, because we're, we're not that much different. But if you speak to somebody perhaps from Asia or another country, and they have quite a strong accent, and suddenly you're talking to them, and, and you suddenly you'll, you'll speak like this, and you speak slowly, and you'll break, and you'll start to mimic their, their accent. Sorry, that was a very poor attempt at trying to mimic somebody's accent. But, but I see what you're saying. You, you try to adapt yourself. I mean, I have friends from different, uh, you know, for, from different countries, and, and, and yeah, I, I speak differently with them. But we do that automatically. Yeah. See, our brain kicks in because this is our <laughs> this is our cognitive subconscious that kicks in and automatically does this because this is how tribes were originally built from being with people who are just like us. So it happens on a subconscious level and we don't understand it until about seven seconds in, then suddenly we think, oh my God, I'm trying to do this silly accent or, or what do they think? Or you hear a, a coworker say, why are you speaking like that? You, are, you, you know, are you taking the mickey out of them? Why are you doing that? But it's actually a natural occurrence that we try to do, but we only do it with people with a foreign accent. We should be doing it with absolutely everybody we speak to. So if they say certain words, and I bring it down to a word level, if somebody says something is beautiful and you say it's fantastic, you have an instant disconnect. So there's very adjectives and, and verbs that we use that need to be the same. And if you start using the same words that they use, especially when, say, you've asked them for a description of their property and you mimic it back or you echo it back to them, they instantly connect with you, and they don't know why. That, but that it is, is oh. man, that is that is that is an amazing piece of information. So I think this last like twenty seconds defined this show. If people can understand and, and sort of con consciously try to try to do this, I knew that. I've read it very. I, I think it was Stephen Stephen Covey. I mean, whoever was I can't remember whose book was you know was was kind of really anchored into that concept of mimicry. Right of that, that, that's how you connect and the tribe and, and but I've never done it. I've never practiced it. Oh, it's it's primal. It comes from our primitive brain, our reptilian brain. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that's how tribes were formed, uh, and and that's part of us now. It hasn't changed over over the thousands of years. Uh, the problem is, again, I, I talked about it at the beginning. We've allowed technology to overtake everything instead of us stopping and thinking. How can I more effectively have a conversation and communicate and build a relationship with this individual? It's really that simple. You start to match and mirror and mimic. Face-to-face, um, -face, we do it with our body language. If we match and mirror their body language, but also our tonality over the phone. So if somebody's monotone, you speak at a monotone level. And you will build an instant connection. Use the words they use and you will build an instant connection. Don't disconnect through words. Make sure you match and mirror what they say and you watch that transformation take place. It really is magical. So that's the echo effect. Yeah. All right. So let me talk about my second sponsor, and we'll finish this out with a couple of tips from Warren on how to handle uh, difficult situations or specifically how to uh, maybe, as you put it, Warren, turn explosive situations into constructive ones. Yeah. So my second sponsor is actually, so I'm going to start and I'm starting to do um, a CMO level consulting myself because I've done, I've had that done to me by my CPA who's really helped me put together a, a whole sort of financial 
uh, depth and understanding of of my company and he's like alex why don't you do it for your clients i'm like well we solve we do pay-per-click and we do you know we do uh content and and we help them with crm is like but yeah but but the strategy that really pulls everything together right and when you do some of that right coaching and consulting so that's what i'm doing um yeah. i want to offer cmo level business consulting uh every small business has the same problem achieving constant growth and constant improvement that's how you grow that's how you become happy your employees are happy they're progressing life is good however you know the trouble is that most small businesses underspend on marketing just because there's too much out there and it's too easy to make a mistake there's all these screaming you know high octane marketing guys out there you know telling you that their system is good by the way high octane marketing individual is homey in my language so i call them homies they're homies screaming out there at you that you know their system is the best and you'll be driving a ferrari you know in two days and or maybe in two weeks if you just sign up and do their thing so i want to basically help the business the property management businesses move away from indecision have a streamlined marketing plan and full execution blueprint we're gonna build it brick by brick with you know and, and check it against the unit economics model with the kpis and forecast for the future uh we're going to remodel the fee structure completely we're going to get competitive uh, analysis completed um we're going to sit down and really map out the sales process and develop uh and put together training resources for the bdms or whoever is responsible for sales uh, we're going to take map the whole pre-sale customer experience and make sure the customer journey starts at the pre-sale level before they even call you right at your website level or at your blog level and goes all the way down for years and years of relationship and it's consistent and it's uh, something that will help you keep clients longer so uh, we'll back this up with a quarterly 30-day power sort of cmo level power call uh, to make sure you're implementing and the things that we discussed and if you're interested in this uh, it's going to be it's not going to be cheap so you have to be at a certain level of success already um and it's a full day thing uh i'll either travel on site or you can come here to Hayward, california um just email me alex at four and half dot com if you're interested i'll send you the intake form you fill that out and we'll see if uh we would be a good fit alex at four and half dot com so um Warren, thank you very much for sitting through it. Um, let's you. talk about difficult situations. Let's talk about anger because property management business is just the daily activity. It's, it's, it's like the normal, normal days. You get yelled at by somebody from somewhere. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, yes. Right. How, how do we deal with that? Okay, well, this may, uh, this may contravene what a lot of people think. Um, I on like how that. To let's, do, let's introduce some controversy. That's great. All right. So a lot of people try to say, oh, look, speak it with a calm voice and, and just uh, try to calm them down and everything else. And when somebody rings you or if somebody's angry about something, the last thing they want to hear is, can you calm down? That's just going, that's adding fuel to the fire. Don't do it, please. If you do it now, just don't do it. What you do need to do, and we talked about it just before, we need to almost match their level of voice and, and tonality. Mm. So we need to get up onto their level because, again, we need to connect with them quickly. Now, this can be quite confronting. I'm not saying if they're saying profanities down the phone or, or, or to you in person that you start swearing back at them. Not at all. But what I am saying is, look, you need to raise your voice and you need to get your tone right and your pace right. So if they're very fired up and they're talking to you really quickly, you say, well, look, I'm, look, obviously this is important to you. What is it that you want me to understand? Mm, nice. Let's play this out, Warren. Let's take a pause. Let's play this out. Let's say I'm the angry owner. I'm calling you. Hey, guys, you know, the window is broken, and I told you that this could happen, and this, these guys are playing ball in the yard, and it happens all the time. What are you going to do about it? Look, I understand the situation, and this is obviously upsetting you quite a bit. What is it that you really want me to understand here? <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> pretty intense like a nice intense comeback okay good good i think i, I, I yeah I, I hope i didn't get too loud their next yeah. response they will repeat more more about the problem they'll tell you a little bit more and their voice and their anger will start to slowly drop and so then you the secret is this is where 
we mimic and, and we mirror back to them or, or, or we do the echo effect again. So let me get that right. So the wind was broken and you said that this was going to happen and now it's happened. When, when did this happen and can you tell me more details around it? Then they'll give you more information. What else is the problem? Is your next question. Hmm. All right? Or is there anything else? Whatever, whatever frame of mind you want to, or whatever words you want to use. Now, I'm never a scripts and dialogues person. So you just say whatever, whatever works with you. But is there anything else? And, and nice and short and sharp. Well, there's this, and, and, they'll, and then they'll go into more detail around what it is. And then you must repeat that back to make sure. So what you're really doing is you're communicating at their level, but you also are listening to them, which is the number one key point. But also, more importantly, you're understanding them because you're repeating it back what they've said. So in their mind, they're saying, this person gets me and they understand. That's really and good. So, That's really powerful. Yeah, and so, but, there, but there's one more vital step. That's and this is generally when you get to the crux of it. And it's that last little question where generally the tonality has come right down in their, in their voice. Their anger's dissipated. Alex, is that all? And you ask, if, is that all? And generally, if there's anything else that's left, they will come out with it there and then. And quite often, it's the most important part of that final, that three-step process is to say, is that all? Then hmm. they'll tell you. So now, if you're talking about trying to resolve a situation, um, because you, you have a, I like the analogy, Dr. Rob Pennington uses this beautifully. You, you can look it up on YouTube. He uses two glasses full of water. You need to put your glass of water aside, your knowledge, all of your understandings and everything else to one side, right? And you need to get their glass of water in over to your side. You need to understand exactly what it is, what their problems are. Once you have everything, you have all the knowledge, now you can offer up the solution. Mm. Because until you have all of those issues out and about, you don't know how to solve the problem. Match the tonality, match the, match the in, in, intensity then uh, uh, um, try to dig and understand their problem in, in, in multiple ways and, and even end the call with, is that all, um, to make yeah, but, sure you get also, everything out. But also making sure you're repeating back what they say. Repeating back what they say. Thank you for that correction. So that, that yeah. is a super valuable advice. We only have a few minutes left. Uh, Warren, I did want to talk about storytelling, but that sounds like a, that's unfair, unfair to do to storytelling you know, within a few minutes. But... Perhaps you can give me, you know, this is like the best way to sell anything or, you know, uh, present to anybody and get your point across is storytelling. We all know that. What a, give me two tips or maybe one tip. Oh, the, the biggest tip, oh, I'll give you two. Okay. We, we, we have multiple stories. They happen every single day in real estate. And that's why it's so exciting. No two days are different. We have different personalities that we deal with, different situations. So we have these stories so many of them, yet we choose not to use them. The biggest key in telling a story is being able to tell it in dialogue and don't narrate it. So what I mean by that is when we often tell a story, look, um, we had Bill and Mary, they had an issue, they had a very similar issue to you. Um, and what we did was we did this, 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 and this, and we put this plan in place, and the outcome was this. I've just narrated a problem-solving scenario. But look, I understand what you're saying, Alex. Um, Bill and Mary had exactly the same problem. In fact, I remember when Bill rang me up for the very first time. Bill said, look, Warren, I need this resolved immediately because if, if this isn't resolved, it's going to create, cause massive problems to the foundations. And if that then goes to the foundations, we may as well pull the whole bloody house down. I said to Bill, look, I understand. Look, the, I've got the best tradesperson for the role. Um, he's going out to inspect the property tomorrow. He'll deliver a full report. I got that report to Bill. Bill's read it and said, oh, my God, I can't believe how sorry you are. This is excellent. Please get that maintenance done immediately, and thank you so much. So I've used the dialogue being my conversation and Bill's conversation rather than just telling. You don't want to be told to. You want to understand how the people that, you're, that are in the story, your characters, what they said to you. It brings it to life. Now, obviously, you can use animation and tonality of voice, uh, but that's just a, a, an off-the-cuff example rather than going into a whole storytelling segment, which 
could go forever. So play out the characters when you're telling your story. Don't, as a matter of factly, just sort of describe the problem and bring in some fictional, you know, uh, you know, Bill and Mary in there, who may or may not have been alive. But um, play it out. And then, what's the second tip? You promised to. <laughs> well, the second one is making making sure that that you tell these stories um, to overcome an objection is probably the best one. So if somebody's um, if somebody's deflecting or, or not agreeing with you, you tell them the situation. And look, I understand that you you want you would like to receive this amount of rent for your property, um, but Joan and Bill <laughs> try and change up some names and so forth. They are in exactly the same situation as yours. Uh, and, and this is how we went about it. And then go into the story about what you actually did with them. And I still remember, and, and the key is the carry out message that you say. And it must be told by the character, not by you, because you're not the hero of the story. There is the, the key number one tip. Your clients are the hero of every story that you must tell. And I still remember Mary at the end saying, Warren, we are so glad that you manage our property and not our previous managers. You have been amazing, thank you so much. And to this day, Mary and I are still friends, we catch up for coffee, and that's what it means to be your manager, your asset manager, to help you grow. And that's why I do what I do. So it brings this story to life, but it also brings it through the character, the hero of the story being your clients, not you. Because quite often we say, I did this, I did this, and I did this, and this was the result. Mm. There needs to be a level of authenticity here, right? I, you know, telling a story about something else or somebody else that happened to someone else, it's just not going to connect as well, man. Unless you're like a premier liar, um, that's just not going to work, man. You better, better be that good. For us, we, we live these stories all the time. Yeah. So it should be easy for, for us to tell them. If you've lived it and if you truly have done the work, I, I believe that that, that that would come out right. Um, but yeah, well, any, but you know, People know that you're lying through what you're not saying. Your 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 nonverbals will, will tell, give it away straight away. Especially uh, in a face to face scenario. So be authentic is uh, is a, is a uh, big advice or, from both of us, right? <laughs> authenticity is the key. I mean, we, we hear it all the time, um, and again today more than ever because of technology that they know who you are. They've researched you. They've googled you. They know what you're about. Now it's about you just being you. Because, as I say, everybody else is taken. That's a good place to end the podcast. Warren, tell people how they want, how they find you and get your book if they're interested to learn more. And maybe, I mean, you do coaching, consulting. If they're interested to talk to you more about that, how would they find you? Yeah, well, go to communicationtoday.com.au so we can do that. Or I've got uh, the book out, I Get You, How Communication Can Change Your Destination. Uh, that's available on Amazon. Uh, got the best seller status in the States. I realize that the American audience... Man. That's big. That's huge. Yeah, thank, thank you. I've, I've, I've really worked on the American market rather than the Australian market because 23 million versus 240 million, there's a big difference. It is, uh, already, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's done extremely well over there, so I'm, so I'm very proud of it. Um, it's concise. It's an easy read. It's not um, as much as there's two and a half pages of reference material that I've got in there. It's a real easy read for you to understand because I wanted everybody to be able to grasp it in, say, a weekend... But more importantly, Alex, is to get out there and implement it. Don't just have the knowledge about it. Just make sure you implement it every day. Very good. There you have it, guys. Best-selling author. I missed that part. Um, Warren Tate, thank you, Warren, for your time. It was an absolute pleasure, and I hope to have you on on a second and third round in the future to talk about more about storytelling and other things, sales and marketing. Alex, it's been absolute. It's been a pleasure. I've had a blast with you and. Uh, Speaking about authenticity, you uh, you live and breathe it clearly. Let's keep it up. Thank you. <laughs>